This video is a step-by-step -step guide about how to send data from UI to a Python script for handling and how to send the data back to the user. Let's create a simple form as a playground. I think that we need text input, a label and a button. So here, text input. a label and the button. Text input, label and the button. And uh, let's change font size of the text input to, let's say, 40 pixels, multi-line property to false and um, the label font size also 40 pixels and that's all I think. Okay, done. To show how to send data from UI to a Python script and back again is a very simple task. But I'd like to go a one level down. How do the KV files work? KV file is just a text file that KV parses with its special parser. And this parser, on the basis of the declaration contained in the KV files, creates a Python's objects tree. That is tree of widgets, and we have an access to this tree. Let's open the main.py file in the interactive mode, python3 i main.py. Close the form, and I have here the container class. Let's create its instance. C equals to the container. Okay. We have the container object. And I want to see its attributes. Dear C. There are many interesting things, but right now I want its children property. This one that will return a list of its children widgets. And we can see our three widget button object, the label object and the text input object. Let's change a bit our layout. I'd like to put the button to the float layout just for the sake of demonstration. Float layout. And uh, pose hint of my button will be center x to 0 0.5 and y will be 0 0.1. Okay, the same view, great. Again. And I'm creating the container class. Children property. And now we can see the float layout object, the label object and the text input object. We have no button here because the button is a child of the float layout object, but not the container. But I want to reach the button. So, see children. I need the first element of the list. It is a zero index. And I need children also. 
And now I have a list with children widgets of float layout. This list has only one element, the button object. And to reach, to get uh, the button object, I want to use zero index. And I have the button object. Okay, let's assign the returning result to a button variable. Also, let's create a label variable c children label is uh, the second element so the one index and having the objects of uh, these widgets in my hands i can reach the root widget that is uh, uh, the container for this purpose the base widget class whose descendants are generally all widgets has the work reverse method method that paces the widgets tree the work reverse returns a generator for widget in button variable this one i'm calling the work reverse method work reverse method returns a generator object and uh, print widget and we can see all widgets placed on our container instance in a reverse order okay uh, playing with the widgets tree uh, we made sure that we deal with a list of objects we made sure that we can reach to any widget in the tree or we can reach the root widget great let's run our form we can play with it. We can input some text, click button, but nothing happens. When we click on a button, the Kiwi framework generates an event, but we did not set the handlers of this event. Let's add a handler. In Kiwi file, in the button declaration, I have to choose an event to handle. I want to have the text on the button changed when the button is clicked uh, the button widget has two events the on press event and the on release event i like the on release event on release then i am assigning to the test property of the button a new value so as usual self text equals to new text instead of go text the self referred to the current instance of the button class that generated an event as usual okay let's test it let's go further and now i want to send a text from the text input widget to the label that is i need to get the value of the text property of the text input and to assign this value this text to the text property of the button the trick is that the widgets that are declared in the kiwi file are not directly connected to each other all widgets are connected indirectly via the root layout in this case via the container that is all management will be run from the container class this case is an implementation of the observer design pattern where the observer is our container class and uh, to observe something our container class should have an access to any widget he needs to observe i wanted to send the text from the text input to the label so the container class should have direct access to these widgets this can be done with the class properties and values of these properties will be references to the certain objects that is to the text input and to the label and uh, when we call a such class property we will get the coding object which we can use in the class methods let's create the container class properties for the text input and for the label let's say the first property will be red eyed coder club 
I do it consciously and I will change the name a bit later. This name I choose for the sake of demonstration to distinguish the, this property from the normal Python and Kiwi object properties attributes. Okay, now I have to assign to the property a value. What the value it should be? I have to assign to the red eyed coder club property the value of the ID property of the text input widget. So let's define an ID and the value of the ID will be in text input let's say one two three and now the value of the ID I will is assigned to the red eyed coder club property so it will be text input one two three I'd like to focus your attention that text input one two three is not a string there is no quotation marks and uh, actually the ID is not a class property we have no access to the ID ID is used by the Kiwi parser only for creating references to objects. I want to look at it more attentively. Let's go back to the console again and valid data after declaration. Yes, because I think that it should be small letter red and let, let's try again. Okay, great. I am creating an instance of the container class and uh, I am calling its IDS property. The IDS property returns a dictionary where the key is the text input 1 to 3 that is the ID of our text input and the value of this key is the object, the instance of the text input class. To be exactly, the value of the key is an instance of the weak pro proxy class, that is, a weak reference to the text input object. What is a weak reference? As you might know, systems with a, a garbage collector work on the basis of references. That is, garbage collector will remove an object from the memory when there is no single reference to it. The problem is that developers sometimes need to work with these objects and they leave references to it. Sometimes this leads to a memory leaks because objects are created and the garbage collector cannot delete them. And uh, to solve this problem in Python, there is the weak ref module and with it you can create a so-called weak references to the object that the garbage collector does not take into account. And these objects will be deleted when the time will come. So the value of the text field 1 to 3 will be a weak reference to our widget, to our text input. And now let's look at the container's attributes. Dear C or for I in print I. And uh, among the container's attributes, we can see red eyed coder club property. Let's look at it. C, Control Shift V. We can see weak proxy to the text input object. And this means that if I will call the red eyed coder club property, I will get the text input object from the container class. So let's create an ID for the label and uh, ID, let's call it label. And uh, here I need uh, the class property. So let's call it the label widget with the label as a value. And the rest is very simple. To the on release property of the button, I specify a method of the container class that will perform all needed actions. So let's call the root of the root instance 
the root referred to the container class and here I need the change let's say label text function method mm, that I will have create right now so let's define a new method uh, change label mm, text text here self and here self label widget text equals to self red eyed coder club text let's check it i forgot to save let's check it again great it's working and now i want to change this property to something meaningful let's say it will be text input text input and here text input nothing changed it's working but no one writes like this usually in python script we have to duplicate the names of the properties and explicitly specify the type of a property because uh, explicit is better than the implicit so i'm importing the object property from kiwi properties import object property and here i have to declare a new variables text input equals to object property and uh, the label widget will be also the object property class instance and the rest is the same and since we are talking in the Python script and in the my Kiwi file about the same properties, then the name of the properties and the values of IDs are matched. S something like this. Label widget, label widget, here text input as ID and label widget as ID here let's check this great nothing changed thanks for watching if you like the video please like it and subscribe to the channel